Good afternoon, everybody. PC Outcast here, back with more of Ambition. And wow, that party did not go well at all last episode, did it? We lost nearly half of our credibility. We gained peril. And we didn't really get as much gossip as we were ho hoping. Eh. But we did get some cheap and some shocking crown gossip, so that is good. We did get something out of it. I'm still absolutely in shock that with a hundred credibility, I couldn't pass a hard credibility challenge. I don't know what else I need. Like, do I need um, clothing that ramps up my favor with that particular uh, group or, or something? Because how do you go beyond a hundred credibility? Anyway, last night, a mysterious fire erupted in the city, consuming an art studio. Rumor has it that this studio was raided by the Guat Royal, uh, then left abandoned. Considering how easily fires spread in a densely packed city of wooden buildings, tensions around the situation have been high. To that end, some of the nearby buildings sustained damage, but the studio itself was raised to the ground. The Guat Royal suspect that this was arson and are demanding that the public come forth with any information that would lead to the criminal responsible. You almost immediately recognize the studio as the one you searched for evidence of Armand earlier on. The testament to your instincts that you searched the building while you still had the chance. Whoever burned that studio down was trying to hide something, which means that there was something there that the arsonist was willing to risk setting an entire city block ablaze to conceal. It's good that you found the evidence when you did and speaks to the value of the cryptic letter and signet ring that you found under the floorboards in your kitchen afterwards. What could they truly mean? Life goes on. All right, we are going to meet up with Anarad today. So, yeah, so I guess um, Alex didn't actually accept our invitation, right? It would seem. We also have a wine tasting coming up next week. We have enough money to cover things. I still don't know what how we're supposed to contact our dude. Oh, I need bourgeois. I have bourgeoisie gossip. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna... We'll do that tomorrow, I guess. We got some cheap crown gossip. We've got shocking military gossip. Shocking bourgeoisie and shocking crown. I wonder, is shocking like the next level up, or is there something in between cheap and shocking? Because then there's also outrageous. I haven't, um, I haven't found any outrageous gossip yet. Anyway, let's see what Honorad has in store for us. Um, oh yeah, I need something for the bourgeoisie. There we go. As good as it's gonna get. And unfortunately, my credibility is down a little bit. A few hours before your rendezvous with Madame Gazelle and you're in your room, just starting to get ready. You hear knocking downstairs at the front door. Camille answers it and you hear an exchange, but the muttering is too soft for you to make out any specifics. A few moments later, Camille enters your room and whispers, Uh, Madame, Madame Gazelle is here to see you. Uh, don't worry, I'll delay her until you're ready. Before you can reply, Camille sets off to her new task with gusto, but you're not optimistic about her success based on what you hear of her stammered attempts at an argument in the stairway. Some moments later, they enter together, with Camille trailing behind Madame Gazelle. Your hapless maid is carrying a large parcel with a bow, a, a, bow, a bow on it. Madame, Madame, you have to understand. I tried to stop her, Camille wails softly. Oh, uh, 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 if that is true, it was a very sweet attempt. Yes, Madame Gazelle admits, reassuring Camille with a light pat on the cheek. Satisfied, she sets her focus on you. Uh, bonjour, Abbott. I've come bearing gifts. The parcel is placed in your hands, and she continues. This morning, I dis I don't know why she's changing from French to something else, but this morning I realized that we're almost the same size. I also know that you, over the ever the social butterfly, are always looking for novel outfits to wear at parties. 
I looked through my wardrobe and found that I had something which will look a lot better on you than it does on me. In fact, how would you feel about wearing it tonight? Um... Are you sure that's the only reason you're in my- yes. Are you sure that's the only reason you're in my room while I'm still half naked? <laughs> she barely conceals a smile. I had, I had considered it, but this was really more of an unexpected bounty than anything else. You've gained a favor. Go ahead, go ahead, open it. You open the package to reveal a gorgeous black silk dress, expensive and rather revealing. It certainly feels in line with the bourgeoisie. You have been gifted Honorod's outfit. Honorod pulls a pocket watch from her bodice and notes the time before putting it away. And it seems I've already taken too much of your time. If we want to make it to our rendezvous tonight, you'll need some help getting ready. Don't worry, madame! Camille happily interjects, that's something I... That will not be necessary, Madame Gazelle interrupts. Your mistress and I shall attend to this ourselves. But... With another word, Madame Gazelle firmly, but politely, ushers Camille out of the room with a swift boot to the bottle. As I was saying, let's get you ready. This, of course, isn't the first time anyone has helped you get dressed before. However, those occasions were about comfort and and efficiency a ribbon tied here a pin placed there you were the one in control this is different being pulled this way and that being fussily crimped and preened without any consultation to you whatsoever you are not the one in control here all that seems to matter is whether your appearance pleases her um Thank you so much, Gazelle. I really appreciate it. Ah. I'm glad you're grateful, she replies with a consented sigh. I have always enjoyed dressing others up like this, even when I was a child. She laughs at the memory. Of course, I had no idea why I was doing any of it back then. I just knew that I liked it. I liked being in control of all the details. I liked it even more when they fought back, but I still got my way. Mm-hmm. You look at yourself in the mirror, and you have to admit that Honorod has good taste. She spends some time just some time adjusting your bodice, but before you know it, these adjustments slowly turn into something firmer and more sensual. Yet the moment you start to submit to her touch, she pulls away, leaving you wanting more. Shall we go? She asks innocently, as if it was all in your imagination. Do you always dress up girls in your clothes before you romance them, or am I just special? Mm-hmm. Yvette, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I was never, it was never just girls. Together, to the two of you head outside where Renee is waiting with you, wait, awaiting you with Madame Gazelle's carriage. She holds the door open for you, and soon the two of you are whisked off to your destination. After spending the first half of the day getting ready, you head out to your run for your rendezvous. Unfortunately, you feel the exhaustion set in as soon as you step out the door. Tonight is going to be a long night. <clears throat> yes, we're now down to exactly 50. Wonderful. You return to the fine dining room and crystal chandeliers of La Grande Taverne de Londres. A few aristocrats glance, glance up from their tables at you and take your measure before returning to their splendid food. Ever since you arrived together, Madame Gazelle's been standing far closer than the rules of politeness might allow. It's easy to forget how good she is at looming over people. <laughs> oh, this is very pleasing, she says, looking at you through narrowed eyes as she slowly circles you like a panther. You've done quite well. You have gained a staggering amount of favor with Madame Gazelle. Turning her attention from you, she surveys your location. <laughs> oh, I absolutely adore this place, Madame Gazelle says with a sigh. The food is exquisite, the lavish decor is excellent, and you know how much I love being served. More favor. She's, it seems that Madame Gazelle already knows the staff quite well, and they have a solid rapport. She orders for you, but the food they give you is exquisite. At one point, the owner... 
Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, we've seen this before. He's got a uh, sword by his hip, and he's kind of portly. And she brings us, he brings a special dessert as a gift. A few hours later, you realize that it's starting to get late, and the two of you depart together. Looking at Madame Gazelle, you feel like today went quite well. Okay, so apparently we are successfully romancing two people at the same time. And now I'm solidly exhausted. So let's go and uh, sell stuff. First of all, shocking bourgeoisie gossip. Ooh. Thank you, Madame. Thank you, Madame. This is exactly the kind of uh, stuff I wanted. Yes. Muchly. What is this? Oh, that's, that means I have it selected. Gotcha. Um, go ahead and sell this. And then this, we're going to pedal. Increase the power of the crown. Ooh, 300. Yes, we're going to also pedal this. Yes. Crown of power goes up. He also knocked down some of our, some of our, um, peril, I think. We've been invited to a salon by a count. Um, sure. Revolution gossip on the 26th. Seems fine to me. And we've been invited by Alex. Oh boy. Where are we at? We're on the... it's the 16th? How did we end up with a, with a date with Anurad again? How did we end up with a date with Anurad again? Did she just like, we are going out, girl? Oh no, wait, we have the option to do that. Nope, let's take uh, Alex's invitation. And, sorry, decline Anurad. There we go. That's better. Now we have a day in between. I'm like, wait a minute, how do I... So she was going to invite us out literally the next week. Or the... yeah, next week. Okay, we... no question about anything. We are staying home tonight. Today. Get rid of our... our exhaustion levels. Good morning, madame. Mm. House is rent. House is rent. Rent is house. We must pay. Uh, I'm sorry I accepted him because I I still have no idea how to uh, how to make use of him. Uh huh. Merci beaucoup. And off she goes. Okay, we are rested. We've got three days till our date with Alex, and then we have uh, we're gonna rest here, and then we got a a. Uh, a wine tasting. So, let's take a look at our wardrobe. Honorod's gift. Look at that. Church hates it, bourgeoisie loves it. That is gorgeous. And we got a hundred. Oh yeah, I wish I could... I could... I, da, da, da. I want... I want my guy. Oh, look at them. I managed to get the crown up to level two. Nice. That's, that's good, right? All right, let's see what we've got to do. We can increase our favor with Honorod and Ludovico. We can work up the nerve. You happen to find the dressmaker, Fatima. Oh, okay. That's a potential thing, a peril thing. Uh, could maybe make some money. Gain favor with Alex. Master of Letters. Researching on Armand. Yeah, I think, you know, it's probably time to do some more research on Armand. Let's do that. Getting ready in a flash, you head out into the street with a newspaper in your journal, a determined to find some evidence of where Armand could possibly be. The journalist who wrote the article mentioned a nearby bakery. It sounded familiar to you from your various walks about Paris. 
You curse yourself for having to rely on such thin evidence. It's a description of a man who might be Armand, reported being seen near a bakery, which might be the one you vaguely remember. That's That seems like solid, solid evidence we can count on. There's no guarantee he'll ever come back here. There's barely a guarantee that he was he even here at all. It's utterly maddening, and you struggle to remember what's even motivating you right now. I must find Armand because I love him. Armand must rue the day he wronged me, and for that, I must find him. You feel a rush of energy as you say this to yourself. You can't stop now, not until Armand truly understands the extent of your displeasure. You managed to find the bakery, but you're uncertain as to where you st where to start your search. Um, go inside and question the proprietor. Let's do, let's do the, the 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 forward front. Although sneaking around worked out pretty good before, but no, we're gonna do frontal assault this time. You're about to step inside when you feel a tap on your shoulder. Ah. Uh, eh. Oh. It's... We should get off the street, he says quietly. You're still struck dumb with shock when he leads you off the street and into a nearby tavern with no other patrons. The staff look at the two of you with a mixture of confusion and indignation, as if the very idea of customers offends them to their core. <laughs> Even after sitting there for a few minutes, nobody approaches your table. This might help explain why there are no other customers in here. I'm uh, so glad to see you, he says, his eyes staring deeply into your own. Oh my god, how? How dare you? How dare you even speak to me after all of this? Ah. I understand your anger, ma chérie. I really do, but can you at least give me a chance to explain? Explain myself, please, please. Listen to hear me out, my love. Lost some favor. I came to Paris, and, as you can tell by my old dwellings, had to live very frugally. As soon as much as I enjoy a little luxuries, my money was better spent on my other pursuits in the city. I was attending parties and needed to make inroads with powerful people, including one Viscountess Dufault. He shakes his head ruefully. I was beside myself with rage. When I heard that they'd lashed out at you to get vengeance on me, I knew that I'd anchored them with my proposals, but I had no idea that they'd sink to such wretched behavior. In fact, as, as he says in a low voice, I believe that they're the one who sent the they they're the one or shouldn't that be ones who sent those men to do violence upon me. <laughs> Thankfully, my father's consent. A uh, constant insistence that I study the art of pugilism proved to be wise. After a great struggle, uh, the, sev the several smart applications of a candelabra on their heads and their shoulders, I managed to drive them both from the house. He stands proudly, but a telltale wince suggests that he might still be recovering from some injuries. However, I had no idea when those villains would return and how many of their associates they'd bring with them, so I had to flee that very night. I know in my mind that this was a sound decision, but in my heart I've regretted it ever since. I am so sorry. Hmm. Honestly, I probably have a few things of my own I need to apologize for, although I can't, at this moment, even imagine what they might be. Hmm. Please, ma chérie, I don't, I don't think anything of it. You had no idea where I was, or if I'd ever be back at all. As for our present, I would never ask you to rebuild a ship in the, in the middle of a storm. Much in the same way, I'd rather we figure out what we're doing with ourselves when this all stops being such a hurricane. You were willing to wait for me. I am willing to wait for you. 
Of course, right now I still have to risk doing going to the States General, as I have many important things to do there. Thankfully, nobody can re risk assailing me while I'm there, but I have to keep my living situation a secret due to the threat of ambush. He says while he pulls out a piece of paper and begins to write on it. He hands you the paper, which he's written an address on. It's a house on the western edge of the city. Don't worry, it's just as charming as the one you're living in at the moment. Armand's purpose is now available to visit. While I can't move back in with you, you'll at least be able to visit me where we're staying. Hmm. Uh, on moment, Armand. What do you mean by where we're living or staying? <sighs> ah, yes. Well, you will see. Armand, what the devil are you doing here? We need to... A woman asks as she walks into the tavern. Huh. She freezes in her tracks when she sees you. Who is this? <laughs> no, I suppose introductions are in order. Yvette, this is uh, Joanna Dujardin. Dujardin? Jardin? That's garden, right? Joanna the garden? She leads the political society I've been working with. Joanna, this is Yvette Duco, my fiancée. She managed to track me down, our man says, our man says quite proudly. Your fiancée? After all this time, I just assumed that I would take on her Valley Girl accent. Joanna trails off, looking you over carefully. Well, no matter. Uh, if someone like her could find you, then we aren't doing a very good job of hiding. We have to go. Huh. Just when I finally found her again? Absolutely not. The way we stay on the street, the longer we stay on the streets, the more likely it is that some assassin runs a blade through your ribs, okay? Joanna replies in a soothing voice. Oh, that's, yes, that's a very soothing voice. Resting her fingers in the back of his, he his hand. You won't see her again at all if that happens. I suppose that is reasonable, reasonable, Armand admits, running his fingers through his hair. Avet, you know how to find me. I want to tell you more, but for now, I need to go. Don't worry, this won't last forever. With that, they leave. Yeah. The more I'm learning about this situation, the less I like it. You exit the tavern, your mind swirling with dark possibilities, and heavy with a sense of dread. You found Armand, but now you're wondering if that was for the best. Indeed. And who is that woman? Like, oh my god. Did you see her hair? Uh, okay, so. Right, so that's Armand over there. The master of letters. No. Dance together. Um... Let's go find out what's going on with, uh, with our maid. Dear Camille, spend the day walking through the city, exploring the neighborhood near a marketplace. The air is pungent. A rush of scents from crisp vegetables to fresh fruit to less than fresh fish. Your ears suddenly perk up at the sound of a familiar voice and you start slipping through the crowd in its direction. Oh, pardon me. Good yawn. You stumble upon Camille, her arms full with a basket full of today's gro of the day's groceries. However, she's been stopped by a watchman of the Goethe Royal, one of the infamous archers. He's berating Camille in the middle of the street. Where'd you get these? He demands, gesturing to all of her groceries. I don't know how to pronounce that. What? What? But Monsieur, Monsieur, you saw me buy these. I got them over there, she says, pointing in the direction of a market stall. I saw no such thing, he says, bl blistering at the suggestion, suggestion that he could have been paying attention to his surroundings. Where's your receipt? 
Emile's eyes dart from side to side, and she turns her feet away from him. Something about this line of questioning is making her very uncomfortable. I, uh, I, I never get the receipts, monsieur. What? That's ridiculous. Why not? Well, I, I, I don't. I, I can't. Camille starts and stops, looking ashamedly at the ground. You're going to have to give me a very good reason not to haul you away, he growls, and one of his hands extends out low with his palm up. Ah, so this, so that's what this is about. Yeah. Hey. Um, beat the crap out of him. Ooh, easy credibility challenge. Uh, monsieur, monsieur, my m a man has stolen my purse. I mean, monsieur, monsieur, a man has stolen my purse. Oh my god, can you believe that? The watchman stares at you, absolutely startled, as you suddenly interpose yourself between him and Camille. What? You've been robbed? Yeah. Which way did he go? We don't allow criminals here, not on my watch. Suppressing the powerful reflex to comment on the irony of that statement, you point him in a random direction to sell the, il the illusion you provide a believable yet suitably vague description of your imaginary assailant. Musket at the ready, the watchman runs off into the crowd yelling after an imaginary cut purse. The moment you lose sight of him, the two of you start hurrying away. <laughs> oh, wow, madame, that was amazing! Normally, I remember to bribe the authorities, but something came over me and I completely forgot. You've gained a cre little credibility. You spend the rest of the day escorting Camille about on her daily errands. It takes a few minutes for her to completely feel comfortable again, but it comes eventually. You have to bribe them so that you can buy groceries? Man, that's rough. Okay, so we gained a little bit of credibility there. Good, good. Girls of journalism. Working up the nerve with Fatim Fatima. Let's actually do that. I want to see what's going on with that. Uh, walking through some of the newly familiar streets, you notice that a new cafe is open. The smell of coffee hangs in the air, and a small crowd of citizens mill about outside to see what's going on. It's then that you recognize one of the people in the crowd. Fatima is pacing pensively back and forth outside the cafe, puffing so heavily on her pipe that it resembles a chimney. You decide to approach her. By the time she finally notices you, you're practically standing right next to her. She gasps and hops back from you with a start. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, that I must have been lost in my thoughts. You know, this isn't the safest place to be distracted. Paris has more than a few villains. Uh, oh, I'm more than aware. Whenever I see my mother, she always finds a way to bring up bring up the latest wicked deed she's heard about here in Paris and telling me to be careful. It's like she thinks that she's the one who was born here, not me. I appreciate her concern, but I'm also not a fool. Huh. It's just that my parents are waiting for me in the cafe. Oh, she says, pointing at the newly opened business with the stem of her pipe. We're just supposed to be meeting for tea, and I'm at my wit's end. They've always supported me, but there's this pressure to succeed that's just overwhelming sometimes. I'm their only child, and I know that they gave me everything that they could, and there are times that I feel like I was a poor investment. She forces a smile, continuing, to be honest, my business at La Pite Mogul has been struggling for months. In fact, your loyal patronage is one of the only reason, reasons I'm still in business. I know my parents, and the first thing they're going to ask me is how the store is going, and... Hmm. Ugh, why am I telling a customer this? This is what my life has come to. I'm dreading that someone is going to ask how I'm doing. I'm either going to lie to them, or I'm going to tell them the truth and bear the disappointment. I don't even know which choice is worse. If that... You seem to have your life under control. What should I be doing here? <laughs> um. Oh, that's interesting. Well, honestly, not to be rude, but I would have killed for my parents to care about my interests at all. I know, I know, the dressmaker admits with a sigh. 
There are worse problems in life, but this is the one haunting me right now. Don't you think I know that? Oh. Shoot. Well, that's too bad. I can't say that you're wrong, though. Perhaps I've been dw dwelling on my own problems too much. Every day there's a new disaster, and if I don't stop to appreciate what I have right now, then I'll only be making myself miserable. Well, here goes nothing. She sighs, stealing herself for what's to come. If all else fails, at least I'll get some good tea and pastries out of the bargain. She heads inside, and you find yourself thinking about applying this wisdom to your own life. Your situation isn't perfect, but you have a place to live in Paris. You have Camille, and apparently people trust you enough to seek your counsel. It puts things into perspective, and you find yourself thinking more clearly about your own situation. Oh! Lost some peril. Okay, so we lost a bit of credibility. We also lost most of her peril. Because you don't want to make things awkward by lingering outside the very cafe where Fatima is meeting her parents, you decide to bring your day to an early close and head home. It wasn't a thrilling way to spend your day, but it certainly wasn't awful either. Well, now, we're going to meet up with Alex, but that's going to happen in tomorrow's episode. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.